episode 88 of the podcast. This week, we're talking about keeping it simple. In the first part, we're going to talk about some basic steps to follow with every dog. In the second part, we're going to talk about using name and explain to help when a dog has trouble. You're listening to the Creating Great Grooming Dogs podcast. I'm Chrissy Newmeyer-Smith. I'm a certified professional groomer, a certified behavior consultant for canines, a certified professional dog trainer, and the owner of Happy Critters in Nashua, New Hampshire. And this, my friends and colleagues, is the podcast where grooming and training meet. I remember someone saying, if you give them a scalpel, they'll dissect a kiss. And at first I really laughed, but then I started thinking about the ways that we do that. Sometimes we really overthink it. We make things far more complicated than they really need to be. Um, The ways that we analyze and over plan. And so today I wanted to talk more about being simplistic. How can we be more simplistic? How can we make an easy peasy go-to formula for helping dogs with their health and grooming care? So here are some simple steps for us. One, assume that the dog will find something difficult. Until that dog has demonstrated for you that they're fine with everything, assume something's going to be difficult for them. Assume that they're going to find something a little bit hard. Two, talk to owners before care of any sort is started, whether that be grooming or veterinary visits, right? That's that's the safety policy that I tell you guys about, and it's about setting realistic expectations. So that's the second one. And then the third one, try to keep the dog calm, comfortable, and cooperative. My three C's, right? So that's number three. Keep the dog calm, comfortable, and cooperative. Now, another way of thinking about that, um, like the fear-free programs, um, the fear-free vets, groomer, trainer stuff, um, they they call it as watching signals of um, fear, anxiety, and stress, the FAS. So look for signs of fear, anxiety, and stress which is just another way, sort of, of saying keeping the dog calm, comfortable, and cooperative. Just that I kind of like to look at the thing that we want to build. The thing that we want to build is a dog who is calm, comfortable, and cooperative. Fear, anxiety, and stress is stuff we want to avoid, right? So if we look at those three things, really, really simple steps, assume the dog is going to have trouble with something, talk to the owners before care is even started, and try to keep the dog the dog, calm, comfortable, and cooperative. Baseline, apply it everywhere. Okay. Now, what changes, what makes it less simplistic (laughs) is, all right, what happens if we already know from these owners that this dog has specific difficulties? That's when we have to be thinking more about analyzing and making a plan. When we know ahead of time, Maybe it's before they even make the appointment that we're like, yeah, well, we know he has difficulties. Maybe it's when we start talking to them that they reveal he has difficulties. But once we know a dog has some difficulty, I still, my goal is to keep the dog calm, comfortable, and cooperative. Those three C's. Again, we can talk about that as managing or watching for signs of fear, anxiety, and stress. But here's the thing. I want you to think about calm, comfortable, and cooperative as the thing we want to build. Because what gets rewarded, what is encouraged, what feels good, continues. Right? We want to build that. We want to build it. So if we're thinking very simplistic, (laughs) right? If you have a dog on your table and they're being calm and they're relaxed, tell them they're good. Pat them, give them a break, right? Start interacting with the animal on your table, right? And don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. There's no need to pull out cookies or or pull out clickers or make a big training plan about it. While this dog is calm, comfortable, and cooperating with you, just be a pal. Be friendly. <laughs> Sounds so easy, doesn't it? But let's look back at what simplicity can do for us. While they're being good, let them know you like it. Let them know it's appropriate. Build on it. Because dogs do 
enjoy our approval. Maybe not as much from their groomer or their vet or a tech or a dog trainer as much as they do from their owner, but they like approval, right? If they're being good and we're telling them, oh, nice, and giving them a pet or backing off, oh, backing off is a great way to reward, like, look at you being so good. You want a break, right? That's actually, if we talk about the four quadrants, that's negative reinforcement, doing well, something is removed. Something that you thought was difficult is removed, right? So be thinking about calm, comfortable, and cooperative is the thing that we're building. Building. And maybe it's not just one thing. Maybe all of those little building blocks to build this big wall of calm, comfortable, cooperative. Okay? So let's look at that like little Lego bricks. (laughs) So we have our Lego blocks and maybe we would just want to build a little Lego house. Okay, so if we see this dog is being calm, comfortable, and cooperative walking through the door and we reward it, we have one little block. If we tell them how good they are when they continue to follow us into the back room, we have a second little block. If we're talking to them and maintaining calm, comfortable, cooperative by giving them feedback, Each time we're adding another little Lego block to our little building to build our foundation, to build our structure, to build the behavior that we ultimately want. And I want you to remember that this is being very basic and this is being very simplistic, right? It's not even specifically about how we're rewarding that as much as it's about spending time bringing it to a dog's attention how well they're doing, right? Ideally, it's how we teach people. We like hearing somebody saying, yeah, nice job with that. Nope, you got it right. You're doing well. We like hearing it. You know, sometimes it's nice to just have someone telling you you're doing a good job, even though you know you are. So be thinking about ways to help a dog build calm, comfortable, and cooperative. Because most of them have something that they're already calm, comfortable, and cooperative about. Right? Maybe it's they're on the table and they're being really good and and it's so common for us to just continue what we're doing until bad starts, until something we don't want starts and then we react to it, right? Which is part of why I'm not focused as much on watching for signs of fear, anxiety, and stress as I am for building all of the the parts of calm, comfortable, and cooperative. If you're waiting for signs of fear, anxiety, and stress, you're not as likely to be building on the stuff that the dog is already doing that's great. And if we're doing it right, it's about as interesting as watching paint dry. (laughs) It shouldn't be big reaction, squash that reaction, big reaction, squash that reaction. It should be really smooth. It should be a dance. It should be light. It should be relaxed, right? We want to help the dog. We're their buddy. Be that dog's buddy. Be their friend. Set them up to get it right. And when we're talking to the dog, some dogs really respond well to that. Gauge the dog, right? Keep it simple. What does this dog like? Does this dog like it when you talk to them? It's not like we don't have to analyze everything. It's not that hard to tell, right? Some dogs are going to be much better with someone who's being really, really quiet and whispers or doesn't say anything. And some dogs really need somebody to baby talk them. We know which dogs are which. You get a feel for it over time. And that's something that's very individual, But if you are thinking about, I want this dog to be calm and I should build it. When I notice calm, I should be telling them that they're doing great, even if it ruins calm for that moment. If they're really comfortable and they act like they're being really comfortable with it, I shouldn't take it for granted that this dog is just comfortable with that and that's not our problem behavior. (laughs) right? Bring it to their attention that they're doing great. Um, If they are cooperating with me, it's not because they haven't thought about fighting back. They're just cooperating and we should be bringing it to their attention that they're doing it well, right? It's okay to not overthink this. 
right? So what are those simple steps? Really simplistic. That first one, assume that every dog you're going to work on is going to find some part of it difficult. Assume that, right? That they're going to find something difficult. Not necessarily that they're going to be bad. Assume that they're going to find something difficult about it. And then if they don't, ta-da, no harm done, right? <laughs> Who cares? If, they're, if they are like, nope, everything was fine, like, score, score one for us. We don't lose anything by assuming that they're going to have some difficulty. But it's them having difficulty, not them being bad or, you know, planning a whole vengeance program toward us. You know, <laughs> sometimes we really overthink it. Assume the dog is going to find something difficult be watching for it. And because you're assuming they're going to find something difficult, spend all your time encouraging calm, comfortable, and cooperative. Try to keep them in that zone. Keep them in the calm, comfortable, and cooperative zone and let them know that they're doing well. Because things that feel good continue, things that are rewarded continue, right? And so if they're calm, comfortable, and cooperative, and they keep hearing how well they're doing, and we're spending time being friends with them, right? We're building the exact behavior we want. Building the behavior we want. It, it, I really want you to think about it as just that kind of simplicity. What do we want? We want a dog who's calm, comfortable, and cooperative. We want a dog who we can touch with stuff and things. We want a dog we can reposition and move around and reach over and touch anywhere. And most dogs will let us do a whole lot of it, but we focus in on that one thing they have trouble with. Let's also focus on the things they're good for and build skills. If you're enjoying this podcast, please remember to subscribe so that you don't miss any episodes and tell all of your friends. This time I want to talk to you about name and explain. When something goes wrong and preparing for when something goes wrong, because again, this is the episode about keeping it simple, right? So when we assume that the dog will find some part of what we do to them, with them, above them, below them, around them, if we assume that they're going to find some part of that difficult, then we can simply talk them through the process. I know, right? Just let that sink in. Wait a minute. If I know that something is likely to be scary for this dog or uncomfortable or frustrating, if I assume that they're going to have some difficulty, I can just talk them through it. Ta-da! <laughs> so, you know, the average, hey there, buddy, you okay? Here comes a loud noise. And I turn things on um, behind me. If it's a clipper, like I turn it down, I put my hand down low, turn it on behind me, and then bring the noise closer to them. Harder to do with the dryer, but I'll often start it on low. But think about like, okay, here comes a loud noise. Cool. You cool with that? Nice job. Or, whoops, did that scare you? Okay, let's get used to that for a bit before I use it. And put the clippers, you know, further away or turn the dryer down low or try it again. Be thinking about there's ways to talk them through it. I love using name and explain. These are house pets. It's okay to talk to them. They're used to living with people. In most cases, for the audience listening here, we are dealing with house pets, right? The dogs that live outside and never ever come indoors and are half feral aren't usually the ones that we're that we're talking about right now you know they have behavior issues too but <laughs> i'm talking more about the house pets um they live in homes they're used to talking to people they actually look to us for information and social cues that's one of the neat things about dogs Dogs are so much cooler than so many other animals out there. I mean, I'm an animal lover, but dogs are just so neat. They literally look to us for social cues. They like hearing our voices and talking to them. So if we assume that a dog is going to have some trouble and we just start talking them through the process, naming and explaining is different than it's okay, buddy. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You're good. You're good. Naming and explaining is giving them the feel for what the tools are we're using, the body parts we're touching, what's going to happen next, loud noise, things like that. And when we use it effectively, we can help with a dog, even if they are totally calm, even if they never have that fear or frustration or anxiety or stress about it, right? 
If we're assuming that they might, that they will, and we're talking them through it, we're also, what are we doing? We're building that calm, comfortable, and cooperative. We're building it. We're becoming friends. We're becoming buddies. We ultimately want to be this dog's friend. And that's, that's shouldn't be controversial, but somehow it became controversial. Like it's unscientific to be a dog's buddy. But <laughs> I want these dogs to think that's my friend Chrissy and she keeps me safe and she sometimes does things that I think are unpleasant. Because I do. I do things that are unpleasant. But I want them to understand I'm their buddy. Going to keep them safe. Just like I want them to be safe for their owner too. Your owner's your buddy. They're going to keep you safe. But sometimes we as the humans in your life have to do things that are unpleasant. Things that you wouldn't like us to do. Like check and see why your paw is bleeding. Pull something out of your fur. You know, maybe it's wipe you off. Help you clean your bum. Take something out of your eye. Right? There are lots of reasons why we have to do things that are uncomfortable. These are house pets. They have to live to a higher standard, right? Any dog that takes a nap with me on the sofa has to be able to be touched anywhere so that I don't get hurt when I roll over in my sleep, right? So when we talk about animals that live in people's houses, they look to us for information and social cues, and we're going to use it. If we're talking to them and they're listening to us and we're trying to keep them calm, comfortable, and cooperative, and we're planning that what are we going to do? If they become, if they become scared, if they have a problem, right? We've already talked to the owners about it. They have realistic expectations, right? So let me talk you through a nail trim as if you are the dog. As if you are the dog, right? Okay, so whatever you're doing right now, I want you to think, all right, I am the dog right now. Put yourself in that dog's body. Put yourself on a grooming table. Now imagine your buddy Chrissy who's been talking to you, trying to make friends with you, right, is now picking up your foot. So this is kind of the way I talk to dogs if I know that they have a problem with the nail trim. And I actually see that quite a bit because that's kind of how I get a lot of my customers is, well, we used to have to sedate them for nails and now they won't let us do that at the grooming shop we used to go to, yabba, 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 right? I get a lot of those. So if I have a dog that everyone says is not good for nails, I've already built a friendship, We've already started talking, right? Now it comes time, okay, hey buddy, I'm gonna pick up this foot. And I start to pick it up in the way that I would for nails, which for me is a lot like picking up horse hooves. I kinda like to, um, instead of doing it from in front, when they're standing, I want that foot to be lifted up toward their belly and or out back. You know, like the, it's a back foot, it's, it's out toward the back, right? But I like doing it when they're standing. So I reach over and pick up a foot. You okay? All right, good buddy. These are the nail trimmers, and I let them see the nail trimmers. I'm not going to sneak up on them. Dogs don't like being tricked. (laughs) You know, tell them what's going to happen. I've had so many owners say, oh, he's never going to let you do it now that he knows the nail trimmers are out. Why don't we just respect them a little bit more than that and tell them what's going to happen? Right? So then I line it up. I start bringing the clippers toward their foot. This is when a lot of dogs will indicate that they are no longer comfortable. They're no longer calm. They're no longer cooperative. And it might just be the slight wiggle away. Here's the problem. (laughs) Guys, I want you to think. We tend to hold on tighter. But that's that moment they're saying, I'm not real sure. And that's a moment where I back off a little. I might release the foot. I might calm them down again with just my hand on their foot and and let go a little bit and and back off with the clippers. They are indicating to me I'm not comfortable with this at this moment. Instead of keep pushing, 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 which is what we tend to do until we as the humans are having difficulty. The dog has been having difficulty for 10 minutes, but when we as humans notice that we're having difficulty, and that's part of why groomers need to learn about training. And vets and vet techs need to learn about training and behavior so that we can go, ah, yeah, we've been making it harder for ourselves because <laughs> that's much harder for the human. Wait so the dog is comfortable with it. So if I pick up that foot and I'm like, hey, buddy, okay, I'm going to reach over you and I'm going to hold your foot. Are you ready? And here come the nail clippers. And he starts to wiggle away. I'm going to take that time to restore 
calm, comfortable, and cooperative. Hey, dude, dude, you okay? All right, let's pick it up. Good. This toe, and I might add an extra step. This toe, and then I touch that toe with a finger. This toe with the nail trimmer, line it up, and I'll line up the nail trimmer on the nail and close it just enough so that the dog can feel where it is on their nail before I clip. So I pick it up, I pick up the foot. Okay, this toe with the nail trimmer, line it up and snip. And then I snip off a piece. If I can do that whole process with them being calm, right? That's the point is I want them to be calm the whole time. If they're not calm, I can back off during that process and back off to, okay, I just need to pick up your foot. You cool? Good. And put the foot down again. I'm going to pick up your foot. This toe, line it up. Nice job. Put the foot down again and not do the trim, right? Pick it up. Okay, we're going to touch this toe. We're going to line it up with the clipper, line it up and snip, snip and put the foot down. For a lot of dogs, they're expecting trauma, right? You wouldn't believe how many dogs relax once they have one toe that's calm during a snip. During that snip part, when they're calm, they very rarely react to the snipping. Weird, huh? You know why? Because it's not the nail trim that's been the problem. It's the being wrestled into this weird configuration and having somebody do something to you while you struggle. Just calm them down. Talk them through it. Right? And letting go after that first toe and go back to brush and tail or something leaves them a chance to think about what just happened. Huh. Right? Because I do. I find a lot of the dogs are like, I need a minute to mull that over. <laughs> and I know that's anthropomorphizing. We can't really tell what they're thinking. But I give them a break. And then I go back. Okay, I need to pick up this foot. All right. This toe. Because we got more toes on this foot right? Three toes, maybe a claw. right? Pick up this foot. Okay, next toe. Line it up and snip. Next toe. You still good? Okay, we're going to line it up. You good? And snip, right? If at any point the dog starts to wiggle a little, right? Think about that little bit of wiggling isn't an opportunity to crank down and do more. That little bit of wiggling is a super polite way of saying, I'm not ready yet. Not, I'm not going to let you do it. It's not a refusal. Sometimes it's just an, I'm not ready yet. So we got to relax. We want calm. We have to be calm too, right? But a lot of dogs, when you just take the time, like, hey, let's take a look. All right, you going to let me touch that? Good. How about with a clipper? Good. You line it up and snip. Nice. Good job. And not go crazy with making the nails perfect if they're having trouble, right? If that's a big, big win for them that you even got the nail trimmers on there and took a little piece off, give them a break. Maybe circle back. Maybe just accept that win, right? But keep in mind, I'm saying a win as a collective win, a win for the dog and a win for you. Not that we're winning over the dog because I hear that a lot. Like, oh, well, that if we, but if we stop, he's won. Okay. I'm talking about a win for all of us, that the dog and us (laughs) <laughs> we all win together when we get it done, right? But that's one of the ways that we can talk them through it. Talk them through it. They're used to being talked to. They can follow social cues, right? And if we've already planned on preparing them for what we're doing, we're already planning on encouraging calm, comfortable, and cooperative at every step, right? Right? They've already been hearing that they're a great dog every time we turn something on, that by the time we get to those nails, they've already become friends with us. I mean, maybe not good friends, right? But <laughs> but we've certainly made an effort to be friendly. Even dogs who are not going to be your friend will notice an effort to be friendly, okay? Um, and, and of course, we're talking about the normal average dog, Right. But that's most of what we're seeing are normal average dogs. And trainers, I think sometimes you guys are only used to seeing the behavior problems that a human understands is a problem and is ready to fix. Right. You don't see the average Joe population where a lot of these dogs have problems that the owners are like, whatever, we'll just get them done every six months instead. 
we'll just do his nails every six months because he hates it so much and we'll wait till they're really really long because we don't want to traumatize him like there's a lot of bad information out there so if we just get used people used to the idea that like hey we're gonna be his buddy we need to help him be successful at this when he wins we all win what you know that sounds crazy doesn't it when he wins we all win right so when something goes wrong if we backtrack to just talking them through it talk them through the steps dogs understand a lot more than we think they do all right and if we're if we're talking to them and helping them be reassured gentle patient kind handling some reassurance right and keeping them calm, comfortable, and cooperative and consistently building on that is really going to be the key to teaching dogs to be comfortable with it for a lifetime and to manage themselves a little bit better and to put up with more human crazy stuff. Dogs put up with so much from us, right? This is more human crazy stuff for them to put up with. If you'd like more information, you can find me at Chrissy at happycritters.net, um, happycrittersdogtraining.com, or you can join the Facebook group, Creating Great Grooming Dogs podcast, or the Facebook page, Creating Great Grooming Dogs. I really look forward to hearing from you.